Hey, this is not sir, and this is the tier 10 Soviet destroyer, Hobarovsk. It has eight 130 millimeter guns, 10 torpedoes, 54 AA defense rating, a surface detect of 8.7 kilometers, top speed, 45.1 knots, total health, 22,500. For my modules, reduced crit chance on main armament, improved aiming accuracy, improved rate of fire, reduced the chance of flooded fire, improved acceleration, concealment. For my commander, situation awareness, basic firing training, faster turret, traverse, last stand, superintendent, demolition expert, and advanced firing training. We are on the map north, and I have not played this ship recently. My last video that specialized in the ship was two months ago, so I'm a little shocked by that, but we're going to play it for 0 0.5.7. Obviously, acceleration was not on this ship previously, and it is now the main armament. The combined torpedo systems that they've done to the aiming and the armament is fantastic, obviously, for a destroyer. And an enemy cruiser, pretty boldly, is moving into A. I'm going to engage him. Initially, I was going to fire HE. I swapped to AP because, surely, he's going to show his broadside as he retreats. Who wouldn't do that when they run up against not one, not two, not three, not four, but five or six enemy ships? This is suicidal. And he never actually changes his angle, so I swap back to HE. And he's going to take great big torpedoes from the friendly Fubuki. The friendly Fubuki, Matty Biscuits, was successful, and I'm glad he was. And he's going to capture A for us. Looking at the map, I think we will safely capture A. I don't expect an enemy to have moved over here other than that cruiser. That was just a crazy attack. I wouldn't recommend that for anyone. Most of the enemy appears to have captured B and are moving to support the attempted capture for C. We, of course, want C to go our way and they take out a enemy destroyer, which is great. We have three friendly ships that are over by D and the destroyer is attempting to capture. So I have to redeploy. Me, anyone on the western flank, we, we're not needed here anymore, right? And one of the advantages of the Soviet destroyer line is the speed. I am going to touch 47 knots in the water. 48 knots in the water with speed boost. It's extremely fast and extremely effective at supporting a friendly who is engaged with an enemy. So my goal, my stated goal, is to move to the eastern side of the map and make sure that our team has success over there. Friendly Gearing is sort of my support staff. He's the detectability and oh, look at what he has detected. A enemy gearing that's eight kilometers out and the enemy gearing's like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to fight. He pops a smoke and we lay into him. We get a fire with our first salvo. Next salvo does 15, 1600 and we just continue the onslaught 2200. He puts out the fire. We light him back up and knock out his propulsion. And eventually he is finally protected by islands and smoke. And I'm not going to continue the pursuit. He is unhealthy. He's going to burn for a while, but I don't want to risk the ship. We're only five minutes in the match, and a more ignorant version of myself would probably risk the ship. I would say, you know what, 10, 15,000 points of damage done to my ship is worth it to take out an enemy ship. But not now. This game is not locked up by any stretch of the imagination, and the gearing is still being pursued by a friendly destroyer on the other side of him, but I don't think he's going to have to worry about the Japanese destroyer engaging him with his guns. We're now in range to support the fight for sea, and it is certainly a fight. Enemy destroyer, enemy cruiser, we got friendly destroyers that are trying to run away as quickly as they can, and I'm going to try my best to at least distract the Fletcher, if not kill. And we're actually doing pretty good damage at range. That's one of the advantages. The velocity is extremely high. I lead the Fletcher a little bit too much. He pauses. I don't know what he's looking for. Maybe to maintain an angle on a target. Either way, I have to compensate. And oh crap, enemy Dunscoy. He's looking directly at us. He engages. I pop my smoke. I drop my speed. And I'm trying to hide from him. 
I swap to AP because look, he's broadside. I'm not passing that up. And I just need to lead him in reverse. He's not going too fast, and he probably regrets his life choices. He pops his radar. You notice the little sort of radar symbol or sound or wavelength symbol next to the exclamation point. That's basically saying, hey, you're being detected by unnatural means. You know, line of sight is not the detection method. This is radar or hydroacoustic. And by being able to feather that throttle back and forth with the acceleration module, it's really hard to predict where a destroyer is going to be. So it's much easier, I have found, to avoid the radar whenever it occurs against my destroyers. And oh boy, an enemy Des Moines. Where have I seen this before, right? We're gonna do exactly what we did with the gearing. We're gonna park ourselves behind an island and hopefully have someone who is providing line of sight and do massive damage. And this really is just an evolution of destroyer gameplay. You know, ah, oh, smoke. Smoke is cheap. You hide in smoke, someone gives you line of sight. We're gonna use radar. We're gonna scout out and be able to engage you. You have no protection. Okay, well, we're not gonna do smoke as much. And you have noticed not as many destroyers will sit in smoke because radar is so scary to them. But now that acceleration is so powerful, we can easily hide behind an island, deny line of sight, and engage the target. Even if they use radar, good luck hitting us. Because they can't peer through the island like they can peer through smoke. They'll see that we're there, but they're never gonna actually rotate around the island fast enough in order to have a line of sight. And we're able to light him up once. I would like more than one, obviously but he hasn't put it out. Either he already used damage control or he's being a little greedy and waiting for two. You know, if a destroyer is engaging me at this range effectively, I would assume he would get another one. But oh boy, the Des Moines is going into a broadside, so I swap to AP and my goal is to hit the superstructure. The caliber of the gun is not quite high enough that I would feel comfortable going for a waterline with AP at this range. The next best location, that superstructure. It's soft and it should absorb a lot of damage. Now we need it to actually hit the target. There we go. That's exactly where we want it to go. 2800 and he's slowing to a crawl. We have multiple friendlies firing on his position and finally he's taken out. And boy, I bet that was annoying for him. He couldn't engage or see any target that was firing on him. And yes, it's so evil, but it's delicious, right, destroyers? All the cruisers and battleships are saying, screw the destroyers, I hate you. I hope you never do that to me. And all the destroyer captains are taking notes. So at this point, we could potentially capture C, but we need a better, stealthier destroyer. Not me, not the Des Moines. The Des Moines is a little crazy moving forward so aggressively, and he is actually taking fire from the eastern side of the map. That enemy destroyer that's over by D is firing on his position. So I state to my team, I'm going for D and I'm going to get that DD. So we're going for triple D and I really want to take him out. I have a lot of health. I don't know how much health he has and I am definitely a stronger ship in the eight to 12 kilometer range by far. And with him firing his gun, he might actually reveal himself. Ooh, he catches sight of us. We catch sight of him. He only has a thousand hit points. He is going to die very quickly. And he's also facing north. So he can't get out of this. He might have gone, oh, crap, I got to go, got to go. Well, you're not going to go very far. And he's rocking the premium camouflage. And we take him out. And again, I mentioned it in the last video, whenever you find someone who's using premium camouflage, they have invested a lot into that ship. You're not gonna invest a lot into a ship if you have a 35% win rate in the ship, right? You invest in a ship that you enjoy playing. You take a target that has invested in a ship like that, it's pretty good chance that the player was at least semi-competent, if not above average, so we're going to capture D, obviously. Well, that's the stated goal for why we're here, not just to take out the enemy destroyer. The game's not looking good, though, right? 
We are down by a ton. 300 points. But we can make this back. You gotta believe that you can win every game. Otherwise, you're not going to get to the point where you can win the game. And I see that an enemy Dunskoy, Killer Croc. That's scary. Anyone who knows who Killer Croc is, he's from the Batman comic book series. He's not particularly a nice person. And he's coming my way, so I'm going to make sure that I have just enough distance where I'm not auto-detected. And we're going to capture D. We're not leaving until it's captured. And I'm going to continue to give ground now at full speed. And, oh, that was close. Just look how close the dotted line is on the map. You got to read the map. You always got to take a look at the map. You can't just ignore it. It's very important. That's why I have it at the largest setting. I would love it even larger than that. And I'm going to send my torpedoes. They have 10 kilometer range. The first time you're sending torpedoes, not sir. What is going on? I know, I know. But honestly, there wasn't really an opportunity to use it over by A. We were moving. We took out the gearing or worked on it. Couldn't use it there. And then as we were approaching C, they were outside of our range. By the time we could use it, the Dunskoy had engaged us. And I was trying to run away and use the smoke. So now, as the torpedoes are approaching Killer Croc... I am waiting till it's just to the detection range, and then I fired. That half a second delay between him engaging me and looking through his binoculars should allow the torpedo, at least one, yes, to make contact. 11,000 points of damage. I really needed that. And it was a really low chance because he was neutral going towards them. We needed him to not really pay 100% attention to the immediate forward position and that's exactly what we tried to manipulate now you could say oh that's not what happened he just he just flubbed it up but it definitely doesn't help whenever a target that you're approaching immediately shows up your your attention spikes to that player and you're blinded by other things that's why you need to always be aware of your surroundings even though you're engaging a target that's why i pull back constantly in the vision game and he's he's doing chip damage, but we're doing way more damage than him. We got two fires on him, and we take him out. We also defend D, and we gave just enough ground where it was not an easy shot. But we were still within our range to engage him. And my rate of fire was so much higher that I could afford to miss every other and still gain on him in the health pull range. So now, a game where we were down by 300, we are up by 60 points plus we have three to one base captures and all that is how you manipulate the game my team went for b they're using the island to block most of the line of sight the enemy was committed to c clearly there is no longer a friendly des moines he died a long time ago c is just not something you can take when a lot of enemies are looking directly over it especially after they've shrunk the capture range you basically have to sit out in the open for an extended period of time and hope that the enemy doesn't have line of sight and i'm going to approach c i don't think there are enemy ships nearby this is an easy capture yes i'm a soviet destroyer with terrible detectability but worst case scenario i'm detected i can use my smoke so i should be able to capture c and put more pressure on the enemy this Iowa is slowly moving forward, bow on, at least based on his estimation. I'm sort of waiting until I get closer to the capture point before I engage, and I switch to AP because he's bow on to the friendlies over by B. I have a perfect broadside. I can really rack up the damage and just look at how much we're doing. We got to hit the superstructure, though, just a little bit. A nudge forward will get us more damage. I pop my smoke and I stop. He can't engage me. He can't stop me from taking C. And I get free reign on a broadside target. This is what you live for. These bow on battleships. Good luck dealing with a side on ship firing at you. It's 3, 3.5 every 3 seconds. It's just massive damage. And he can't do anything. If he shows his side to my friends, they will one shot him or do way more damage than I can do in a half a second. But just look at it. Look how much damage we're doing. We've probably done 30,000 points of damage at this point. 40,000? 
He's angling a little bit away, and he takes quite a big shot from a friendly, and the friendly finishes him off, and I can transition directly to the Yamato, but obviously the game ends before that, and it felt good coming back. We definitely didn't deserve to win this game, but good teamwork ended up giving us the win. I got two kills, over 100,000 points of damage, 2,710 base XP, and I really did enjoy the angles, the opportunities that I was given in this game, most of it obviously main battery, 56,000 AP damage. Most of that was against the Iowa. I hope you enjoyed seeing this ship. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you next time.